We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Joy in My House, inspirational reality show with a touch of recovery, a reality show where nothing is left unsaid. And no one is insignificant who shares, and we're just laughing, having a good time before it started, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We okay. have to. We have to. Just Joy in My House. <laughs> there you go. There you I go. I want to thank you for coming, not coming on, thank you for being a part of Joy in My House for the 193rd episode. I know. We're, we're kind of taking a turn here where we're spending a lot of time being more transparent, and right. like you said, you were getting more into the word, and- Working things out and, yeah, and how, God's how's really that going for you? You know, I enjoy it. It, it, in it. I feel that God always has to force me to do it. Right. Because if it's in my own will, I'm like, I'll put oh, it yeah, off. Oh, yeah, you I'll can hide behind those uh, guests. Oh, yeah. But it wasn't hiding behind I me mean, for a season. Not that we're not going to have more guests, but mm. he put it to where he's challenging you. Right. Yeah. Getting me out of my comfort zone. And I remember first starting the show. I was really uncomfortable doing this. Right. It, it feels natural. Well, you wouldn't even do it. I didn't want no way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I'm also uh, at a different point in my life where I used to do these red carpet events and, and hang yeah. out with a You're lot of my friends. Anymore. I'm doing that actually at zero right now. Okay. So I'm not getting and meeting the people that I need to meet to, to right. book for the show and some of these people that are amazing people. But God's working me in a different way is what I feel. He's making I me do sit too. down, be still, read my word, right? analyze the word, and how does it speak to me? And then it's allowing me to to you give these these amazing topics that are just so perfect in timing mm-hmm. for myself. Excellent. Yeah, you you always call me each week. He asks me what what topic do you think, and I just kind of sit there, and then the Lord will bring a topic, and it's stuff that I myself am, uh, am dealing with mm-hmm. because I think that's the important thing that people are coming along our journey, our journey, right? As we're hopefully encouraging them on their journey, and it seems like to me right now. You not running around and doing all the different things that you've had to do. Mm-hmm. I'm sure more healing is coming for you. Most definitely, you know, yeah. I, I deal a lot of with anger and resentment, mm-hmm. and and I've been having these these dreams. Really? Oh, and they're they're, wow. they're pretty powerful, huh? Pretty powerful, and, okay. and and I don't know if I'm if I deal with abandonment issues, but I keep finding myself mm-hmm. my mom leaving me in this area where. In L.A. where there used to be a lot of gangsters and I used to have to kind of fend for myself and I have to fight them. And I've, I've had two dreams like that. Wow. One of my ex kind of leaving me too. Wow. Uh, my, the, child, the mother of my, my older children where um, we're on a vacation trip and, and she leaves and mm-hmm. I'm kind of left alone looking for her. Mm-hmm. And then one of my recent ex uh, just being very disrespectful to me in my dream. And, and I just like, I can't believe you're acting like this. You're so selfish. And it's so weird that mm-hmm. these emotions are coming up like a flood and all of my dreams have some level of water in them, some wow. level, level of, of ocean you feel and like storm. like you're drowning, like you're drowning, Not drowning, just overwhelming. Right, right. And but you just, know what? It's so interesting. It's so interesting without talking about, um, because this, go along, this goes along with what we're talking about going back in the past and mm-hmm. dealing with issues and things. Mm-hmm. I remember I had a real good friend and I won't say who what his name was, but he had been married um, like something like 20 or 30 years prior and his wife had, had left him for someone else and mm-hmm. he had gone on and married some another lady and they had been married doing pretty well for 20 years and then she kind of had some um, emotional issues and kind of broke down and so their marriage didn't work out and he was so shocked that his dreams, because he really loved that second wife a lot, but his dreams were always about the first wife. Wow. And he was really shocked. And it just goes to show, show that he had not dealt with that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So even though you get involved with other people, yep. you're still processing the first relationship, the which is what we're talking, mm-hmm. which, which we're talking to people about dealing with going from relationship to relationship. But there's still unfinished business in a lot of these areas. And you just said it. Yeah, no, and it's, it's so true. And I feel it. Uh, you know, um, it's very interesting because she called me up. Mm-hmm. And left me a message. I don't always take her call. You know, I always, I'm always very busy. Mm-hmm. 
But I didn't feel like taking a call at the time for whatever reason. It wasn't because I was busy. I just didn't feel like taking it. She yeah, left me a message. There. Yeah, I didn't want to go there. And she asked me to come on the show. She actually left me a message to come on the show. I have to pray about it. And I have to pray about oh. it pretty deep. Lucy. Oh, I would, are you kidding? <laughs> but I have to pray about it because... Why did she want to come? I don't know. I haven't spoken to her about it just yet. Oh. But it's something she called me up. and It's crazy. I, felt, I've, I, felt, I have loved each and every one of the women. I don't know... You got to get it together. I love each one that I have met. I have loved the each mothers one of, of those children, girls have been The mothers awesome. of my children have been great women. It was me that was broken. They had their issues, yeah. but it was me. And I love Ashley. You know? And, and, things and are I a didn't know different. too well, you know. Yeah. But Anne was a sweetheart. I didn't I didn't know her too well. Mm. But she really cared for me. You know what? You've had some really neat ladies in your life. God has put some amazing women in my life. Really yeah, has. he really has. And the truth is, each one has always gotten exponentially better in different right. ways. They, right. It really has. So I'm looking forward to But relationships God are has. tough. I don't care who it is. Oh yeah. I think people are looking for that one. <laughs> the perfect one. It the doesn't one. exist. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I had to finally stop going to those sh- those movies. I'm not kidding. <laughs> you know, 27 dresses and all those other <laughs> coming out of there, you know, all forlorn and, you know, all mm. of a sudden he shows up and I, I'm sure it happens for some people, but not the people I know. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. hard because we keep thinking that the one is coming. Right. It's not the one. It's us being the one and getting yeah, ourselves exactly. together and having the stamina to deal with these relationships. Yes. Now, some are a little bit more toxic than others. We have right. to admit to that. And, and that is so yeah. true. Some are a little more toxic than others. And you got to also know yourself to the point where what you're kind of willing to work with and what you're, what are things are, are deal breakers. And that's for me, there's certain things that are deal breakers. Right disrespect and dishonoring i just heard a great sermon by Je- uh, pastor jensen franklin on the way over here oh yeah he's your about god honoring yeah. god right and how you know he he uh, uh, moses's wife is being dishonored by moses's sister and, right. and god actually came to his sister and said yeah. and met them at the door go to the temple and he met them at the door god has always worked behind the curtains right but here he meets him at the door and he gives her leprosy for being dishonorable to moses's wife right. Right. who was ethiopian so she was black. Right. And he gave her white leprosy. Yeah. White as I never snow. thought of it that way, but that's true. How interesting. That's very true. And I feel like honor yeah. and, 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 and respect is a big thing because I brought up was brought up in martial arts. My father's very everybody respects my father, right. my mother. I come from a very respectful family. And my mom was always taught us to honor. So when I find myself not honoring God, I find myself isolating. Right. I really do when I feel like God, I'm mad at you. Like, mm-hmm. how dare I get mad at him? He's done so much. Even though well, he can deal with my resentment can. and my anger, but... You can love and be mad at the same mm-hmm. time. But I think that would maybe be interesting while you pray about it to maybe for a healing on, on the show. I mean, you've been so, transi- so transparent in terms of relationships. I, you know I what I'm sure saying? Am. So, you know, it'd be interesting to see. But I'm just glad that you are telling people that even though you're with somebody else, that doesn't mean that you have not dealt with what has taken place in your past. And I find that I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. I really am to Mm -hmm. have had you come into my life when you did. And I'm doing my second, uh, 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 the second level of of Celebrate Recovery, which is a journey continues. And we're going, preparing ourselves to make amends. And I think this amends process is going to be really cathartic and healing because I am going to have to sit my exes down, the mothers and and my children, and go deeper. Right. Because they really need that. Mm -hmm. But the truth is I really need that. Right. So I can move on because I'm ready to move on. Well, I like to say, I like to think I'm ready, but these healings are going to prepare me even right. more. Exactly. So I'm excited, nervous, and, and, and it's a lot of hard work showing up to these meetings. It's a lot of yeah, hard work good. doing the work, making my phone calls. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just feel like... It's a lot. Plus, like you said, you know, <laughs> uh, the dreams. It's interesting because I used to have dreams very similar that mm-hmm. I was uh, abandoned downtown Ooh. in L.A. And the only people that were my friend were the homeless people. And it was really d- interesting because I would flag down a police officer mm-hmm. in peril and they would just drive right by and not do anything to help me. So that's kind of our way of viewing God, mm-hmm. that he's not there, that mm-hmm. he's the ultimate, you know, um, authority figure. Mm-hmm. So God was showing me, yeah, abandonment has a lot to do. So I had those very similar dreams. And I'm having c- contrasting thoughts because mm-hmm. my parents have always really been there. But I think we talk about emotional presence emotional presence and i don't think my parents emotionally were there for me right right they were always there to teach me to guide me but and and i'm not talking a friend but somebody who maybe just listened to my concerns in my heart 
I think they would shut it down right away and tell me what I should be doing as opposed to sometimes just listening. So I catch myself with my children. Mm -hmm. You know, I have three children and a granddaughter and, 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 and I catch myself telling myself, you need to just stay quiet. Just listen to them. They don't want any advice. Sometimes, First of all, yeah, they know it all already. Yeah, they do. Yeah, really. <laughs> and sometimes I just need to listen to them and I catch That's myself true. more and more just shutting down and just really being attentive. Mm -hmm. So God has done a work and is he doing has. a work and hopefully continues doing the work because we have a great show for you today because last week we had a show on abstinence. Yes, we did. Which we did. was, again, spoke to me. Yeah, that was pretty good because you went, you went into deep detail into your relationship because... Mm -hmm. You've been apart for a long time right now. Mm -hmm. So how was that going into detail with that? It was it was really difficult. If you saw me doing the show, my eyes were down. I, I have a lot of resentment and I have a lot of hurt right now. Right. And one of the biggest things, and, and Jensen Frank, again, heard it, I, I've listened to like 20 sermons this last week. That's what I do. <laughs> I haven't, I've been so busy. You know, thank God my mother's in her new place. We'll talk about that later. But I haven't had the chance to sit before God. I... I need that. So I'm glad you're doing that. I, I have to right now yeah. at this point. I'm not even listening to any music. I listen to like meditating music, uh, Kataro that I've been right. listening to for, for music decades. Music stimulates, can, mm -hmm. can get you going and stuff. I Yeah, that's true. So, so. I've, been, I've been just listening to a lot of sermons and, and talks about, um, uh, you were you're mentioning, I'm sorry. Well, you were talking about, you know, um, being transparent. How was that when you opened yourself up and you said that you were, your eyes were down and you felt a lot of anger and a lot of it w uh, yeah I was I was in a in a place where being vulnerable is is so scary yeah it really is in a relationship or even here it's right. intimate because it's just us right. here in production team but when you're speaking to people out there it, it's a scary thing it's a very sensitive place to be you can be moved very quickly right. by your feelings so what had happened? You listened to Jensen Franklin. Was he talking about? So I was about? listening to Jensen Franklin. He had a great sermon on, on um, oh, I wish I could remember. I just lost track. But I, I, I remember it speaking to me directly and telling me, this is what you need to do. Right. This is the process of your healing. Mm -hmm. And being alone is difficult, but you don't have to be. And we're going to talk about that in our show today. Right. Um, but it's a, it's a tough, tough walk. Yes, it is. It is. Well, that's why he calls it the road less traveled. I, I like Dr. Scott Peck. I, oh, yeah. I, I have all his books, and I just read them about 20 times. Well, my Bible, of course, is first. Everyone knows, you know, that goes without saying. But that's why it's called the road less traveled. And Jesus said the road to him is narrow. It sure is. At the least I feel that right The path to him is narrow and very few, but the, broad, the road to destruction is broad, and many travel on it, mm -hmm. which is kind of going to go along with your... Yep. Some of the things that you worked out today. Yes, mm -hmm. no one wants to walk this road. Oh, no. But it walks you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, we, we talked about abstinence yeah. last, last time. And right. We were talking about my relationship, and it, and it talks about not sinning in your anger. Right. Because I'm angry. I want to just go and run amok. I can do what I want to do when I want to do it. I have the finances for it. I have the, the means for it. I have the, the, the time for it if I wanted to. And, I, and then God has me just sit down and he's cinching everything in and compressing yeah. everything. So I just, my eyes are on him. And I find it difficult mm -hmm. yet very freeing. Right. And we're going to talk about powerlessness today. Yes. We have a great show for two, which was a topic that you chose, which was so appropriate because it's right where I'm at. Mm -hmm. I'm powerless. Right. I'm powerless. But with him, my strength is shown in him. Well, good. I'm looking forward to it. Ladies and gentlemen, All this right. is Joy in my house. I want you to stay tuned because when we come right back, we're going to be talking about powerlessness. Make sure you link up with us on Facebook, backslash Joy in my house, Instagram, backslash Joy in my house, and Twitter with any questions or comments for us. We're going to come right back. Hello, I'm Joel Ramirez. And I'm Lolita Robinson Coppage, and welcome to Joy in My House on LATalkLive.com. Inspirational radio with a touch of recovery. A reality show where nothing is left unsaid and no one is insignificant who says it. Exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio RB or watch us 
on Ustream TV. Reality Radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live and we are more than just talk. Hi, this is Marsha Waiteka inviting you to join me every Monday at 1 p.m. for Born to Talk where conversation plus connections equal community. Be sure to tune in to Born to Talk with Marsha Waiteka, Mondays at 1 p.m. Pacific, exclusively on latalklive.com. You can also listen live at iTunes Radio R&B, TuneIn Radio, Radio Flag, Live 365, or AHA Radio. This is Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. We are L.A. Talk Live, and we are born to talk. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Joy in My House, inspirational reality show with a touch of recovery. I'm joined here by my co-host, Lolita Robinson. I'm really glad to be here today and having this heart-to-heart. So am I. You know, it's very, uh, like you, we, when we had our time to pray before we do the show, yeah. you said something that really spoke to me, that hopefully this process also gives ourselves healing. Right. And I think it's important for us to also be touched while we do the show we always talk about our guests and how they speak to us and right. how they have these amazing testimonies and 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 god's using them to speak even to us here in the studio but to have just us you and me working on a topic that's right god can do it well he is doing it and see we're not setting ourselves up as examples that is not what we're doing well, i hopefully we're here as f- as fellow journeymen mm-hmm that as we are on this journey, we are opening up and sharing with people. I love the kind of minister, pastor that ministers to me are people like Bishop Jakes and um, Jensen Franklin, Pastor Franklin. I like people who break down the word, you know, the hermeneutics of it. They break, break it down, the intent of the author, uh, you know, what, what, what it was about not taking the Bible out of context, but I also love application. Application is key. I, it's it's <laughs> key for me because I need to know how does this, how is this relevant for me today? Right. How do I get through today? I don't think I've ever met a pastor who is, both of them are so open to talk mm-hmm. about their lives and then right. it helps me to realize, okay, so this is where I am. It's like, a, it's like a map, mm. you know, okay, I'm, I'm in this, I've come up against this detour sign. And so someone goes, well, you know, I was here and this is what happened to me when I did this. So it gives me, oh, okay, I don't feel so bad. That's what I hope we're doing when we're sharing. Mm. We're not, I'm not trying to know your business or air dirty laundry, but yeah. it's helping somebody out there who's listening, especially men who, from what yeah. I hear, you guys don't. Grass does not grow under your feet. I don't know <laughs> men who stay around and wait on mates. Men are never alone too long. So right. you're doing something that's a little different, encouraging and it, and the brothers feels, not to jump into something else right, right away. And it feels different. It right. does. It feels having to to give you know have first of all having to be a little disciplined. Right. First of all, and second of all, really having to give yourself over to God. To really say, all right, God, you really have this. And we're going to talk about that because right now our lesson is on powerlessness. And why did that strike you? Why did you, you know, when I mentioned it's powerless? Because it's a first step and I okay. kind of keep reverting back to the first step in my right. recovery where I'm powerless right. over my compulsive behaviors. You know, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to entertain myself. Even like you said, just with music, mm-hmm. I start driving and I start getting a feeling. Mm-hmm. And the first thing I want to do is go to my phone and put something that I want to listen to. Right. And I'm having to put it down and say, maybe let me be quiet. Right. That's why I've been listening to a lot of instrumental music where it doesn't have words. So I'm not trying to listen to the words. I'm trying to listen to God speak to my heart. Or heck, sometimes, you know, like we have those coupleitis, you know. Right. Listen to a song. I used to. I was listening to music. I wanted to go find a boyfriend I had when I was fifteen. <laughs> I was looking for him, and I found out he has a prison record. And I thought, uh, <laughs> I think I better stop. <laughs> but I mean, it does. You know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love music, but it can it can trigger stuff to to get the ball rolling again. Right. You know what I mean? And I agree. So I've been listening to just instrumental music, right? And I've been really just trying to just slow down. Good. Just stand still. And would you have done this if you had had a relationship right now? Would you no, be you, you wouldn't be, be able. To, I wouldn't be able. I wouldn't be able to. Right. I had so much going on. I mean, between my kids, you know, if 
my girlfriend has kids and and then you know having to meet up and what are we doing now i mean it's a hundred miles an hour right. all day every day that's right i mean i would teach all day not even be able to change out of my workout clothes and right. go straight to to dinner mm-hmm. and ha- it was just it was a lot so you know th- there is a there is a plus side to being able to sit and be okay with yourself i used to ask my sons are you that uncomfortable with yourself exactly that you have to endure or be in in situations that at this point are not working you know it's Mm -hmm. it's uh most of us want to run from ourselves so it's good and we'll talk about that a little bit because i really had some good alone time okay this weekend but we were talking about yeah admitting we were uh we're talking about powerlessness here on joy in my house and we're talking about we admit that we were powerless over our addictive behaviors and that our lives had become unmanageable Uh, nobody wants to admit that they can't control their lives but when the pain is greater than the fear Mm -hmm. that's when i was ready to take that step Mm -hmm. um in that step it's what's unmanageable mean to you you know i just like to break it down you know that's good and manageable people think oh that means that you know you can't pay your bills, right. your, you know, all this. That's what they think, yeah. But it gets even simpler than just not being able to control your emotions. Somebody right. cuts you off and, you know, I'm a fighter. So, I mean, you tell me to pull over. I don't mind pulling over and, and scrapping. Mm-hmm. But that's unmanageable. That's not right. right. I shouldn't be doing that. And what if my kids are in the car? Or what if that person, I hurt that person? Or vice versa, that person hurts me. Mm-hmm. That's unmanageable to me. As I was driving down here, um, I'm driving on a lane and a car cuts me off. So I go around him, not even fast. Mm-hmm. And I see him in the rearview mirror flipping me off. I'm like, you cut, you cut me, me off me and off. you're flipping me <laughs> off. That's, that's crazy to me. Yeah. But yeah. again, get me back 10 right. years ago. I'd slow my car down. Hey, you want to pull over? We can yeah, handle we can this. Take, we can handle this, you know. I have no problem. But what does that really prove? That that my pride is bigger? That, that my life actually proves that my life is unmanageable. Right. That I can't control my emotions. That I can't say, hey, you know what? Nothing happened. He didn't put me in danger right. he just maybe was in a hurry well unmanageable for me too also means that i i have a lot um different things going on as people know i'm you know helping my sister with her daughter and then i'm also you know my mother and then my own thing still healing and getting my life together but unmanageable for me is when my place is a mess which i don't allow that or my laundry's not done or i'm not getting a, a nap or my business i have to put all my business aside because I'm out putting fires out for everyone else. Mm. Okay. So I've had to learn that I take care of home first. Mm. I really do. There's times when the phone is ringing and there's an emergency (laughs) going on and I will literally go, you know what, God, I'm not you. That's right. I am not the savior of the world. So they're just going to have to wait. You're going to have to take care of it, Lord. Right now I need to have a cup of tea. Right now, I need to fold my laundry. I need to make sure my cat's okay. I don't have anything in the house for groceries. I need to have everything in order. When I'm in order and when I'm at peace, then I can go out and help other people. And that took that was a lot for me to do that because I always felt responsible that I needed to go and rescue and help all these people. But we talk about that in program. Yeah. We can't give what we don't have. Right. So if we're giving this 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 program or we're giving this structure mm-hmm. and us ourselves don't have it how can we give that I, it, it's it's impossible for me to give advice on uh, even on relationships if me myself can't handle my own relationships right, right exactly so to me you talk about credibility and it's a big big factor for me is ha- being credible walking that walk first and then learning from it so when somebody does come to you you can say well, you know what? This is what I did. Right. This is what worked for me. This is what did it. Might not even work for that other right. person, but this is what is proven in my own life. And that's being a witness. And I think that's important. Absolutely. In okay, principle so. one in Celebrate Recovery program tells us, uh, realize that I'm not God. I admit that I am powerless to control my tendencies to do the right, the wrong thing and that my life is unmanageable. It, t- it says when we accept this first step, this first recovery principle, And take the first step out of our denial into our reality, we find out that we have very little control over anything. Right. And I think that was important for me to realize that I I don't have control over Mm -hmm. many things. Mm -hmm. You know, we even think we have control over the weather. Right. You know, it was it's it. You know, this weekend out here in LA was a little rainy. Right. Um, We think we can. Hey. We're going to do this, this, and everything's going to still go as planned. That's right. And it doesn't. Right. No, it does not. It does not. So that was a big one for me. CR calls these uh, D 
defects of character or serenity robbers, mm -hmm. which I thought were very profound with, for me. We talk more about character defects in Lesson 14, which is the ready step. But for right now, we're going to talk about these serenity robbers. One of them was pride. And I like what it said. It said, ignorance plus power plus pride is a deadly mixture. Say that again. Ignorance plus power plus pride is a deadly mixture. I wonder what that means. To me is, you know, we don't know any better. Right. And if we have a little bit of power and a whole lot of pride... It's going to cause destruction. Or what we think is power. Or, yeah, okay. or what we think is power. Yeah, right. It's, gonna, it's, it's, it's detriment, right. detrimental. Right. And not only to other people, but to ourselves. Exactly. We become our own gods. And I remember saying that, you know, thinking that no matter being the master of a studio and, and running, you know, so many students and, and being the head, I could do no wrong. I can right. do whatever I want. And at the, end, at the end of the day, I can rationalize why I did what I did. Yeah. And... I don't answer to anybody. And you think you have power, but you don't. Yeah, I really had <laughs> no power, but in my mind, you know. Yeah, you were running the world. So I like that. So pride. And, you know, in Proverbs 29, verse uh, 23, it says, Pride ends in a fall, mm -hmm. while humility brings honor. You know, this generation lacks a lot of honor. Right. Lacks a lot of humility. Exactly. Very entitled. People want to work less and get paid more exactly there's no work ethic there's no honor there's no uh, foundation of morals and principles like we used to not that people don't have them right it's just it's okay to to be in debauchery it's okay not to have high standards mm -hmm. or these principles and it's disappointing because i see my children growing up and i don't want them to be that way i grew up in a generation where the standards were high and i still didn't have them Right. So I can't imagine how difficult it is growing yeah, up now. Today is like, you know, these these kids are not. You know, but how again I like that. How does the how does being powerless um figure into again what is it called the For for me uh, the serenity robbers. Serenity robbers. So the when pride. we don't so when we don't so when, when I'm we're prideful. not so when you're not powerless then you're into your pride. That's what you're right. saying. Okay, I love it. And and it and it's so when you, when you take control and you think you manipulate everything, you control everything, mm -hmm. you're thinking you're doing it, but the truth is you really have no control. No, you don't. But the world says you do. Hey, well, that might be some of the anger. That might be some of the anger. That I think, yeah. That you're having that you frustration want things, and anger. I want things, things to work to be out. a certain way and mm -hmm. you expect people to be a certain way and when they're not, then it's very... You know, you get very upset, but you're looking at that, which is good. Mm -hmm. And I think good. that's very, very, I remember training a young lady who mm -hmm. who's, was raised by her grandmother, who she loved very much. And her grandmother told her she would never die. She would never die. She told her, gra her the grandmother told the girl. The granddaughter, girl? who she was raising as her daughter, that she would never die. Oh, my gosh. So at about. 13, I think the grandmother passed away. Oh, my goodness. And the little girl to this day is resentful towards the grandmother wow. because she lied to her. Right, right. Yes, the grandmother was trying to protect the young girl from having these yeah, feelings that's of devastating, loss. devastating, yeah. But to this day, she's a grown woman. And she's still having these and issues. And she still has these issues of anger and resentment towards the grandmother for, for leaving her. Well, this is what we're talking about. Again, it's going back to dealing with these issues. They affect our lives today. Mm -hmm. They affect the relationships today, stuff that we have not dealt with, you know. And it takes away this thing that we call serenity. Right. Because the second serenity robber that we're going to talk about is only ifs. Okay. Our only ifs in our life keep us trapped in the fantasy, la in the fantasy land mm -hmm. of rationalization. That's a big one. For me, if I only went to school, right. if I only got educated, then my parents would be proud of me and respect me. If I only, you know, married so-and-so then I would live this happy and content life and my mm -hmm. children would be whole and, and I'm only if, only if, only if. And the truth is, it's not, it's fantasy land. Right. It doesn't really exist. First of all, I can't go back. Can't go back. And, and second and of all, if I would have made those decisions, I'm There going... would have been only ifs then too. Exactly. Because <laughs> if you had gone to school, like some people, and, and um, I know people who have gone to school and who have gotten degrees and are working a certain way, but they're not necessarily following their passion. Mm -hmm. You know, if only I had have been more willing to not have to go the route of the paycheck mm. and been willing to be a little bit more entrepreneurial. Right. Like my girlfriend tells me that all the time. Man, I really respect you. 
you are an entrepreneur. You wrote your book. You have your CDs and you're mm -hmm. speaking and stuff. I said, yeah, but you could pay your bills. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, know, so you have that consistency. You have that <laughs> consistency. So it's on. So there's only only if only on every aspect. Right. You know. So those keep me trapped. Yeah. In my fantasy land, in my rationalization. Right. I can rationalize anything. Right. Because it was only if it didn't exist. So, so that's, so you're that's not, a big serenity so you're powerless robber. Over. So you're yes. a serenity robber and also you're powerless over choices that you could have made but you didn't. Exactly. I have no control over that. Right. I have no control over that. But if I dwell on it, it takes my serenity away. It takes away. your serenity away. But yet I'm it powerless cause, over it. And cause anger too. Yes. And discontent. Well, we're very Disappointment, restless. Very restless. Anger. Angry. The whole bit. Mm -hmm. Very good. Another one was worry. Worry is a big one for I think for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um this one's not as, as profound in my life, but worrying is a form of not trusting God enough. Right. It says, so don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of our tomorrow too. Mm -hmm. Live one day at a time. It's Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. That one for me, I've been told the opposite. They say, you must be irresponsible if you only worry about today. But I would tell them I can only live in a moment. Right. I can only do what's right during this that might period be some of time. I remember that some of the, you were talking about that in some of the relationships you were in, mm -hmm. about how you don't seem to worry, you stay in today. But now I'm a question. Mm -hmm. For the addicts, and you can't speak for everyone, but for you as an addict, was there an element of not worrying about the consequences? Just live today and what, how it, whatever happens, happens? No, no. Okay. I, I think as an addict, yes, when I was yeah. an addict, That's what I'm talking, as an addict, I didn't care yeah. about the consequences. Right. Now I care about the consequences, but me living in today doesn't mean I do whatever I want. No, I, I understand that. It means that. that I do the right thing in the moment, right. and then I see the blessings of it tomorrow. Okay, so you've turned it around. Yes. So just because I'm living in the moment doesn't mean that I get to do whatever I want, and I'll worry about the consequences later. Well, the reason why I say that is because being the, the Alan on the, the, the partner of those who were with the addicts, we did a lot of the worrying. Mm -hmm. Because we were taking on the guilts and the fears. There you go. That's the maybe why I didn't worry. <laughs> why you all didn't worry. In fact, I had a friend who, one, one of us, she said, you know what? The meetings are so different. When you go to the meetings of those who are the, act, the addicts who have stopped using and the ones who were married to them, she said, you go to the <laughs> meetings where the, they're like partying and laughing and, and you mm -hmm. know, talking about showing their war scars and the yeah. stuff they did when they were using and drinking and the people who were... Married to them are crying and going, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'm it's very down. true. I mean, I'm, I'm just generalizing. But, yeah, we took on the cares. The codependent takes on the cares and the hurts and the fears of other people's behavior, you know. Yeah. So I think we need a little bit of, we need to shake hands. In other words, yeah. you're kind of like, okay, I do care today. I am concerned exactly. about, you know. And I am concerned about tomorrow, but I live but in today. You live in today, and I'm learning to release and not be so, you know, people got to live their own lives. Mm -hmm. They have to live their own lives, so. Yeah, I look at my daughter, and she has her own path right now. I'm very proud of her. She went back to school and mm -hmm. is completely dedicated to school. Um, her and her ex-boyfriend, who's the father of her kid, who's also very young, you know, they're, they're having a friendship right now, and they're raising they're my granddaughter, yeah. Malika, and they're being very cordial to each other and helping each other out. You know, if, if he needs to be picked up from work, he pick, she picks him up. If Reality. she needs a little bit of money because buy some diapers, he okay. comes and supports. And I'm like, that's how it should have been to begin with. You you build a friendship and then later on decide if this is a person you want to spend the rest of your life with and marry. Well, that's what, now that's who I would like to have on the show. There I you think go. she would be very, I mean, she might not be ready for that yet, but right. the reality mm -hmm. of being young and having a baby and doing this stuff that the world glamorizes and exactly. the reality now of walking in what a relationship really is. It's really? a partnership. It really is. So they don't have all the love and all that crazy stuff they were doing before. Mm -hmm. Now they're being real and raising this child. Mm -hmm. That's what life is. And it really is. Yeah. It really, it really is. Maybe one day she'll, you know. I think that'd be a great idea yeah. because she's really in that place where she's. She's 19. Yeah, she's young, but yet she's. She's focused and concise in what she does. Eats well, works out when she can. She would love to work out more, but right now her priority is schooling and raising the baby. And but she can like, talk to people, to a lot of the young people who mm -hmm. might be going down that that path, you know? I agree. Yeah. But we were going to intervene right here, interject, yeah. and you had some things that you wanted to talk about because we were on worrying, and worrying is not trusting God enough. And for me, it, you know, 
I trust them, but my actions also have to show it. And I think that's where I was going to end. I, I really need to allow God to work. Well, it was interesting because this morning, you know, sometimes I, you know, I used to sit and prepare for, I don't have the time anymore. When I was speaking, I would prepare for a, a long time. But this morning I woke up and I just felt like to look up the definition of powerlessness. Mm -hmm. And I looked up what surrender is. Okay. Because it's, it's kind of sounds like two, it's two aspects of the same coin, but it's different. Mm -hmm. So powerless means devoid of strength or resources, lacking the authority or capacity to act. I'll say that again. Powerless, devoid of strength or resources, lacking the authority or capacity to act. Now, when I read this, I thought, you know what? A lot of people in the Christian community don't like, don't like the sense of powerless because mm -hmm. it's doesn't sound like you're victorious in Christ. It sounds like you're defeated or that you're a victim. But what the Lord spoke to me this morning, powerless is how I am over other people. There you go. Okay. I am devoid of strength and resources to find your answers. Mm -hmm. I lack the authority or the, cap the capacity to act on your behalf. So most of the time when I know those of us who are codependents get in program, we have to realize that, yeah, we're powerless. Or we're not even in the fact that we're powerless over other people. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're talking about when we don't have the power. We don't have the resources. I don't have, you know, I moved my mother into this new place and it's nice, but she's not had a, a great time with it. She's, you know, making the adjustments. Her whole life is different. It's changed. And I have to let her be who she is. Mm -hmm. I can't make her feel that's right. or be or do or anybody in my life in terms of all I can do is walk alongside them. That's right. And to do the best I can do. But that's what powerless means. It doesn't mean that you don't have that you're a victim or that you yeah. um, you can't take care of yourself. You don't have the resources mm -hmm. to take care of other people's lives. Now, I looked up the word surrender. Okay, surrender means to yield to the power, control, possessions of another or the demand to give oneself up into the power of another. So as Christians, we surrender. Mm -hmm. Okay, we surrender and yield our power over to the Lord. So when we're saying we're powerless, we're not saying that we are not victorious in him. We're saying that we don't have the ability that he has to make right. about a change in somebody's life. But when we surrender, which is what he commands us to do in Matthew eleven twenty nine, take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your soul. Matthew 18, 4 says, Whoever therefore shall humble himself or herself as this little child is the greatest in my kingdom. And James 4, uh, 10 says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. So it's like he gave me the difference of what surrendering is and what powerless is. Mm -hmm. So how does that ring for you? I think that's very profound. Like you said, it's like two, it's the same thing, but in di two sides of the coin. Right. And, and, and it's important that we do break it down because, like you said, people do think, oh, powerlessness, it's because I'm a victim. Right. But it's not. It's our strength is in him. Right. It's his strength that he has the power to, to change our compulsive behaviors. He will heal us. Right. But it is through him. And a lot of times we, we don't want to be powerless. Right. We want to be strong. We want to be victorious. We want to... We want our outcome. But when I, I believe, mm -hmm. when I truly surrender to him, mm -hmm. things work out so much better for me. Right. Even though I have to do it in a different way as what society deems right. Mm -hmm. Success, wealth, um, whatever it is in, 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 in business or, or, or even, even a social light. Mm -hmm. You know, partying and, and, and going to a lot of clubs and then letting you in the VIP that socially is like, oh, you're, you're, you're up there you're socially. Up there. Right. But the truth is, it's very empty. Right. Do right. they really know you? Do they really know your hurts? Do they really know what you're struggling with? Mm -hmm. No. And they'll never probably ever know. Well, that's true. So that's why we're kind of like breaking this down. Because I think a lot of people that are, you know, in the church don't understand that. They don't understand that. We're, when we say that, you know, we're powerless over alcohol or or I'm an alcoholic and I'm recovering this, they're like, well, you're claiming something that's negative. Mm -hmm. No, I'm reminding myself that, therefore, the grace of God, if I don't remember that this is what took me down, right. 
and put that before the Lord daily, then I'm doomed to repeat this behavior again. That's perfect. Okay, that's what. That's why I felt like the Lord was saying, break this down what it means. Mm-hmm. And like you're right, in terms of surrendering to him to come out of these powers. Exactly. We do have victory, victory in him. And you know, when we're in, in Celebrate Recovery, uh, when I led the step study, the first thing I said is, we identify as believers first. Right. First thing we do is we identify as believers in right. Christ. Then we talk about what we're in recovery in. Uh, you know, uh, secular programs, you know, you identify as your addiction. Uh, my name is Joel. I'm a narcotics addict, uh, right. opiate addict, you know, alcoholic, drug addict, whatever it is, mm-hmm. sexual addict. So to me, it's important that we first put God first. Right. And when we identify, we identify as believers first. Mm-hmm. Then we talk about what we're in recovery for. Right. And it made a lot of sense to me to first identify as a believer. That is important. That is very important. You know, because you're talking about. You know, surrendering. Mm -hmm. You're talking about powerlessness. Yes, I'm powerless over my addiction, but through him, through his power, I I don't have to go to that. Absolutely, absolutely. So it is. It's it's a. We're helping you today. A lot of people might be struggling out there. You don't want to admit that you have a problem. You you feel like you know I should be strong enough. I should be able to handle this. Mm -hmm. I should be able to do this. And you. You only have so much time of day if you're in bondage to something you can't get out of it on your own nope you need the support now some people can like like i had a loved one who was able to not drink anymore Mm -hmm. he stopped drinking but he didn't deal with all the other stuff that was underneath it and thank you for saying that because when i first got into recovery i Mm -hmm. started in a in aa Mm -hmm. so i stopped drinking but I still had all the isms. Right. I still had all the attitudes and, right. and the hurts and right. everything. I hadn't dealt with the, the, the emotional part. Right. I just dealt with the applicable part, which was not to drink. Right. But then all this other stuff came up. And one of those things that we talk about as one of the serenity robbers when we're powerless is escape. Okay. By living in denial, we may have escaped into a world of fantasy and unrealistic expectations, not only for, from other people, but from ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like you were saying right now, why can't I handle this alcohol problem? I should be able to say no to alcohol. Right. But yet, I was never able to. Mm-hmm. But yet, I, I should be strong enough and powerful enough, but I wasn't. Mm-hmm. And that's what I had to surrender to God. And look at, I have going on my 11th year of sobriety. That's, congratulations. Yeah, from any mind altering substance. That's right. So it wasn't me. Because in my own power, I wasn't able to stop drinking. Or if I did stop drinking, I still had all the attitudes of an alcoholic all the all the obsessions and stuff like that so what you're saying again is these are serenity robbers and if you don't stay powerless then you get into escapism you get to escapism worrying only ifs just turning it in pride very good and then all these things again take you away Mm -hmm. then you're powerful again if you're prideful because you're acting out in your pride if you say that again so if you're powerful if you're powerful you're prideful. You're going to take matters into your own hand. You're going to manipulate it. Right. And you don't have the power. Right. And it's actually the opposite of it. But in the world, it seems that way. Mm-hmm. But a big one for me is this one, which was number five, which was resentment. Yeah, resentment that's where, yeah. acts like an emotional cancer. If, you, if I allow it, I put I. Mm-hmm. If I allow it, and it will fester and grow. And it talks about, in my anger, don't sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. Mm-hmm. And do not give the devil a foothold. And that is in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. And resentment's a big one for me. You well, do that's me why wrong. I hear resentments fuel a lot of the addictions. That's yes. what I, I've heard from. I had a, a sponsor who was a double winner. A <laughs> double winner. What they like call, that. you know, uh, <laughs> she was codependent and, and used. But she was saying that alcohol, I mean, resentment fuels most addictions. Yes. Because you get a resentment behind it, you know, so you... You feel justified. You feel justified. Is that how it worked with That's you? That's how it worked for mm-hmm. me and works for me. That's why it right. says, don't sin in my anger. Right. That is so important to me, you know, especially right now with the resentment that I have and the anger. I just want to run amok, like I said earlier in the in the first, uh, ep- uh, in the first segment. Mm-hmm. I just want to do whatever I want to do and not care. I know that I can't. I know that I shouldn't, but I still want to do that. And how would that look? You mean getting in another relationship? or Whether it's getting another relationship or, for me, it's entertaining myself. Okay. You know, whatever that means. Yeah, you know. I remember you used to get on the plane. Remember you I used to go fly. New York. <laughs> I, I went to New York. I started horseback riding. I went and started taking flying lessons. Oh. What was that? That was all a distraction. Yeah, right. Same with and this. And you don't feel the, the need to do that now? No. 
I feel just the opposite. God's saying, you're not doing anything. You're going to sit down. Okay. And I'm not mad at God. But in a way. But in a way, I'm just, I'm disappointed that I'm back. And I used to tell you, I'm back to step one. I'm back to square one. And you say, no, you're further along than you think. But yeah. We all get back here. <laughs> we need to because we all become powerful again. Exactly. I love that. What you're saying, become powerful. I can handle this again. Mm -hmm. I can take on, I can take this on. But even if you could, why? Yeah, why would I want to? Exactly. I mean, why? You why know? would I want to put all the burden, right. all the stress of life right. on these little shoulders where I can barely handle just, like I said, my moment by moment? So what do you do for your resentment? For someone out there who is going through, uh, I, mine was, you know what, mine was kind of the opposite. I forgive too easy. Mm. You know, I don't hold grudges. I never have. Once, you know, once something is done, I'm kind of like, okay. I was too, gave people too much grace. Mm -hmm. And allow people to, to do things that were disrespectful. And so mine wasn't that. I had to learn to hold my boundaries and hold, you know, my stand. Mm -hmm. But what do you do for you when you have these resentments? Well, you this is a secret this. that I've learned. It's not a secret, but this is what I do. I have to forgive quickly. Mm -hmm. It's the only way. Because if not, my mind goes and it's like, oh, I remember this and I jot it down and I remember this and I jot it down by the end I'm so resentful I'm like why did I even go through that then mm -hmm. am I going to go through that again I just got to forgive what's done is done like you said I have to be the opposite of you uh, which you were a little yeah. bit more graceful because right. I'm not very graceful yeah, you do me graceful. dirty you deserve what you got okay and that's not right. I don't want to deserve what I what what the, yeah. what I get. I want people to be graceful to me. Right. So I have to extend that grace, and it's very difficult for me, because I'm the type as an eye for an eye. Mm -hmm. And that's not the way God is with me. No, it's not the way He is. He's actually just the opposite. He's very graceful to me. But so is I'm your forgiveness feelings? Is it feelings that you're having with your forgiveness? No, I think it's applicable. Like sitting down, Alicia, when she acts up a little bit and saying, "You know what? It's okay. I know where you're at." I understand. And not telling her what she should do. Right. Just being, I know where you're at. I know you're upset. I know you're disappointed. Mm -hmm. And just letting her know, you know, I forgive you. Now she's starting to realize, whoa, well, what was that about? About her own, her own self? Yeah, about yeah. her own self. Right. So I think that's a big one for me. Well, that's good because I know that was, that's been a really harsh thing for you in, in some of your relationships. Yep. That's something that's really got to be, but at least you're looking at it. And that's exactly where I'm at. I'm, I'm addressing right, it. Right. Now I have to, like you said, apply the technique. Right. So I learned the technique. Now I have to apply it. When I teach, I teach a technique, then application of the technique. It has to be in steps. So now I have to start applying it, which is coming up on my amends sheet, mm -hmm. which, I, like I said, this amends uh, celebrate You've recovery. You've made amends before. What's, yeah. what's different about it? It's just going to be deeper. Right. It's going to be some of the things that I, I maybe dismissed or for, wanted to forget about or it's just going to be more real mm -hmm. because I'm in a different place. Right. So it's going to be maybe some different things and maybe some things that I'm still doing right now. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a good process. I'm, again, nervous, and it's always hard to sit somebody down and be like, you know, I'm sorry for this. I'm sorry for that. I want right. to address this. And then hear what they have to say, too, because... That's yeah. hard. That's hard. That's going to be... I'm not going to hear what I want to hear. No. Oh, you're... <laughs> that's you were no fine deal. and dandy. Yeah. Don't... No, it's, yeah. it's going to be hard, but... Yeah. This is a process that God has me in right now, and it's okay. Mm -hmm. The next one we're going to talk about is loneliness. And I like what Celebrate Recovery uh, Lesson, uh, uh, I think this is Lesson 3 or Lesson 2, says about loneliness is it's a choice. Mm -hmm. It really is. I like to be alone. Mm -hmm. Don't talk to me. Don't look at me. You know, if you're rude to me, much the better. Right. But God wants us in community. This weekend I had some lessons rescheduled on Saturday, which is one of my busiest days. What do you mean I, rescheduled? People canceled? Yeah, they, they couldn't train on Saturday. Okay. Some of my younger students, because the school that oh, a lot of these children's yeah. school go to oh, okay. is, is, uh, is, was having their annual carnival. Okay. So one of the parents invited me to the carnival. And I said, yes, I would love to go. I have like eight students at that school. Wow. It's a very prestigious school out here in Pasadena mm -hmm. on Huntington. And it would have been easy for me just to be alone. But I showed up. And there was No, alone is not bad. So yeah. I think we need to, okay, 
loneliness and being alone alone is not bad mm -hmm. withdrawal right it's, isolation isolation that's different mm -hmm. okay this was just an opportunity for me to, to but you to wanted fellowship. to isolate you wanted to I isolate wanted to isolate and withdraw mm -hmm. okay I trained these families the mother the husband the mother the husband the children even the grandparents at times so for me to spend time with them and, 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 and see them as a family unit and how they Interact. family dynamic is, mm -hmm. it's God teaching me how to be a husband, mm -hmm. how to be a father. And some of these, these families are really strong Christians mm -hmm. that have supported my fighters, have supported the show, have come on the show and given their testimony. Right. I have shared my testimony with them, and yet they trust me to come to their house and teach their children. It was very powerful for mm -hmm. me to spend that time and to see God work in their lives and how God is trying to teach me and surround myself, again, not with this music that's going to make me go the other way or right. not in the clubs where it's going to make me do these other things, right. but to have me be in a unit of, of familiness. So you can, did you take Zaley with you? No, no, it was, it was just, just me. Just you. you just just had, me. You know, that's good. That's good. Because so you're saying loneliness. I'm tying it in again. Loneliness is a... A serenity robber. It's a center, serenity robber and loneliness. When I act out in loneliness, which is isolation, or it is my powerlessness. Or getting involved with other relationships. Oh, yeah. Distracting, mm -hmm. you know. Mine is more isolation. I like to isolate. Okay. I like to be by myself. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to hear from nobody. I don't return anybody's phone calls back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even things that I should be doing. Okay. Well, that's really very good. And the last two that I'm going to go very quickly before we, we close out is... Emptiness. Emptiness is a big one because it leaves us hopeless. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, my purpose is to give life in its fullest, which is so important. He really came to die on the cross to give life in its fullest. So we don't have to be hopeless. We really don't. But we have to keep our eyes on him, which is not an easy thing to do. I have, you know, I've discovered that too before in, in my recovery. I'm, you know, I, it's better for me today, but I, I would feel empty and feel hollow. Mm -hmm. and feel like I have nothing to do. I have no purpose. I'm, so then I would get out of myself and get involved. <laughs> and serve. And try. Well, no, this is before recovery. Mm -hmm. I would get involved and want to be in a relationship or be in somebody else's stuff, mm -hmm. okay, to keep from feeling that empty void, to keep from feeling, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes when you're empty and you have nothing to do, that's the time to rest. I agree. That's the time when I don't have a lot of, I used to panic when I didn't have a lot of things to do, <laughs> a lot of places to go, or the phone wasn't ringing a lot. Now it's a time, but thank you, Lord. It's a time where I right. can just rest in him and, ha and replenish my strength and my energy. But being empty, a lot of people do feel that with. Not that, being in a relationship. Not being in a relationship mm -hmm. or addictions. But mm -hmm. like you said, or you can get into serving too much. Right, that becomes your addiction. Because we were, I was listening to Alice Begg. I love him. He's um, <clears throat> he's a pastor. I, I don't know where Alice Begg is from, but so, it sounds like Ireland. Or, But he's powerful. He's been on, he was talking about Eli um, in the Bible, the prophet who was, uh, Samuel was under him. And how <clears throat> Eli was a powerful man of God. He heard from the Lord. And he, he uh, would assume that people would go to Eli for their needs to be prayed for. But his sons were not in order. And he lost his life behind it, and so did, so did his sons, because he did not hold them in check. Mm -hmm. They were doing all kinds of things. They, were, they weren't serving the Lord. They were desecrating go. the temple. So he was talking about it's, it's good to be busy about God's business, right. and it's good, it's, bus it's good to be serving and being supportive, but if your own household is not taken care of, which we were talking about earlier, earlier. being unmanageable, right. then that is where we get in trouble. So... I like what you were saying, that you are finding a balance. Right. There has to be a balance. Like this weekend, like I right. said, I went and spent some hours at the carnival and spent it with different families. Right. But then I also left. Right. And then I went on my own, had lunch on my own in Pasadena. Mm -hmm. This place I really love, Earth Cafe, had a really healthy lunch. Then I went and taught some lessons that I needed to teach for the evening. Mm -hmm. And it was just so... But Peaceful. then you're also there with your with your daughter too. Yeah, and then I came and home with your son. I taught. I came home. Mm -hmm. My girls were there, and it's like, all right, let's go to dinner. Okay. And then spend time with them. It was just a really peaceful, balanced. serene. But that was the next word I was going to use: balanced day. There you go. And that balance is important because if it's not balanced, I become selfish, which is the last one of the last ones. Whoever clings onto his life shall lose it, and whoever loses his life shall save it. That is Luke chapter seventeen, verse mm -hmm. thirty-three. 
that selfishness when it's all about me. When I went to this to this event was to give back to the little kids, the, the young kids that I trained, to mm-hmm. let them know that what they do is important to me and I value it. To let their families know I take a lot of pride in what I do, but I take a lot of pride in the commitment you guys have made to me. Mm-hmm. Then I left that, had my alone time. Then I went, taught my, went to work and then went home and spent my family time. Just a well-balanced day. So it's not unmanageable. It, it, you know, okay, certain so aspects of it become unmanageable. If, but right now... If you stay, if you're not powerless and, and, let, yeah, God, exactly. and let God surrender. So that's why I'm tying all this in for people because you do such a great job at, at um, you know writing these things out and looking them up with celebrate and it's but you're tying it you're tying it all in yes because powerlessness on the last serenity robber mm-hmm. is separation mm-hmm. people talk about finding god as if you were lost this is the main one at mm-hmm. the end this is the one that matters the most which is in romans chapter 8 verse 38 and 39 for i am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from his love Amen. death can't life can't the angels won't and the powers of hell cannot keep us from God's love and this is I need this right nothing will ever be able to separate us from the love God demonstrated by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as he died on that cross having the reliance on God himself for me not that uh, not everything not everything on me allows me to live in the present I'm out of my denial and in my reality Which means to me, it is okay for me not to be okay and have everything under Under my manipulation. There you go. And we talk about that powerless. powerless. It's okay to be powerless. And at the end. But it doesn't mean that we're powerless and being responsible for taking care of ourselves, which I like what you were Mm -hmm. saying. You took care of yourself. You had to work. You had to rest. You had to eat. Mm -hmm. You had to, you know, be in fellowship with people and take care of your kids. So we're not saying you're not responsible. You are responsible. But when you realize you're not the the runner of the universe if you're not <laughs> God himself it's a good thing when you surrender to him and that's what I did yeah the whole day Saturday I was think that's just awesome. in his presence surrendering to him listening to sermons and asking God I'm going to this carnival with a lot of my clients mm-hmm. what is it that you have me there for one of the mothers tried to say oh you know what we need to pay you let me how much do I owe you I go not today right not today we're today. not going to talk business yeah enjoy your family I'm just glad to be here and be a little part of it for this little 30 minutes with you, 30 minutes with you, 30 minutes with you. All right, bye. Well, that's good. And also with me, I know because we're getting ready to close up here, powerlessness, powerlessness for me sometimes means that I can't take another step. Mm. Like this week I was so tired because I'm running back and forth, still helping my mother with this move, which I think she's relaxing more into it. I was physically exhausted. I had to come in. I could not... I usually have a list of things. I didn't get any of the things done. <laughs> I went to bed at like 9.30. But the next day I was refreshed there and I was go. able to do what I couldn't do yesterday. So sometimes people, powerlessness means you can't take another step. Yeah. It means that you just have to just relinquish, let go of your lists, have a cup of tea, go to bed early, you yep. know, or watch Criminal Minds, which I did for my <laughs> 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 you know, there you go. But that's that's what it means. It means taking care of you. So yeah. what, how was to join your house today? And don't happy forget, happy Mother's Day for next week. For next it? week, happy, yeah. yes. Happy Mother's Day, one of the most important days, I think. But for me, joining my house is having that balance. Right. Like you said, having being able to not dive into, you know, worrying, mm-hmm. dive into my escape, diving into my resentment, diving mm-hmm. into my pride. It's living one moment at a time and doing just a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there, and be balanced. That was the joy that I had in my house this Saturday, and I hope that it just carries on till today. Good. You know, church. Today I'm going to a new church in Brea, Brea Cause Community Church. Good. Then, you know, uh, the show today, and then back to my daughter and spend some time with her before I take her to San Diego. You know, that's my life, and it's okay. And joy in my house today is when other people are not happy, and they're making choices that are different from mine. I don't have to do, lose my peace or my joy. <laughs> Amen to That's that. That's what joy in my house is all about. So <laughs> Amen this is a good to show. That. So happy Mother's Day next week. Happy Mother's I'm Day I'm doing next my week. annual. We're going to go see the, the... I wanted to, like Elizabeth was talking about, I wanted to be Jack Sparrow, but that comes afterwards. So I'm going to go see Galaxies of the Universe or whatever that is <laughs> yes. with my boys. Good We're going to have our annual movies. And good what are you going to do with your mom? 
Um, not sure yet, but I'm pretty sure we'll go to brunch or we'll take yeah. her to lunch and it'll be a great Mother's Day. It always well, is. You're always welcome to join us, but I know you, you have thank a whole you. lot going. You've got a whole lot of mothers. So <laughs> I want to thank you guys for being a part of the joy that we have in yeah. our house here. Join us live every Sunday Thanks, here at Richard. noon on Joy in My House with life-changing stories and talent that will inspire you. This is Joy in My House. You guys have a blessed, blessed day and a blessed Mother's Day next Sunday. Joy in my house, joy in my house, joy, I got Talk Live, Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we're more than just talk. Stay tuned.